Now, welcome to Benley Central, I'm going to call it, because there's quite a lot of work going on uh, with the Benleys. Obviously, mine's on the ramp here. Uh, Sean's is on the ramp behind. He's tinkering around doing a service, uh, and we chanced across uh, a rack. Uh, it's an original Benley one, so he's fitted that. So that one's there going on. I've not really been touching it, just been helping him a bit. And over in the background, on the far side over there, uh, well, as you know from the short video I posted, um, I managed to pick up a frame and log book uh, and about, I'd say, about 80% of a Benley, uh, which is an ongoing project. But I am going to build that into a bobber. I mean, I've got my everyday one with the fairing and panniers, so I want one that's a bit different. So it's a 185 frame. I've got a 200 engine to go in it, uh, which I'll change the log book for the engine size. So look, down the line, we'll be bringing you, hopefully, that coming to life. Um, I've got wheels and all, I've got loads of bits for it, but the, but the bits that I'm missing, like the rare bits, like mug guards, seats that rot, you know, all the difficult bits, because it's a bobber, uh, well, I'm not putting original mug guards on, it's not having an original seat. So I've got a lapera seat placed on it over there. I think that's lovely. So that's a work in progress and we will be bringing you that. Now back to the matter in hand. Uh, I was going down to the Cotswolds the other day, because this is my everyday ride. And um, uh, I got halfway between Buckingham and Milton Keynes. Oh, and it started playing up and misfiring, and it was down to 20 miles an hour. Uh, I know they're not blisteringly fast, but this kind of will do 70 miles an hour with the panniers and fairing and fully loaded. Um, so, oh, it was so slow, and it was in rush hour. I thought I was going to get hit up the back by a car or something. That it was in the dark. It was 6:30 in the morning. Um, so I pulled into a farmyard, and all I did was whip this cover off, and there was a bit of oil in there. I cleaned the points, um, put it all back together, ma I managed to check I'd got a spark, uh, fired it up and it ran and it did get me all the way to the Cotswolds and back a round trip of about, uh, what is that, that's 170 miles. Um, so that was happy days, I made it home, I thought I was going to be calling the breakdown service. Um, so look, because I need it every day I thought I might as well get involved uh, and try and sort it out properly. Um, so, uh, and I was doing it in the middle of the night, that's why we haven't filmed it. Uh, so, what have I done so far? Well, let's get to the chase. Um, I've put a new ignition coil on. Uh, here's the old one. I'm only suspicious of that because it was a bit damp and I... Uh, look, I've got one on the shelf. They're 19 quid from David Silver Spares. Uh, so, uh, plus the vat. Uh, so, i put a new ignition coil on, so that rules out any skullduggery from the ignition coil. Uh, well worth doing if you're not sure, because I've got no real way of testing an ignition coil apart from measuring the resistance, and that's not foolproof. So, new ignition coil. Um, obviously, that's got the new HT leads. I've got new NGK plug caps that were on it anyway. So, that's gone on. And in the meantime, uh, I've stripped it all out because what I noticed was there was oil. Uh, there's a breather hole in this case, uh, which you can see here all the bolts are going to fall out, which I've got ready. There's a little breather, look, the oil, if it gets into this case, because this should be dry, goes in there and out of that little gallon uh, and out there. And that was dripping oil uh, and it ran down uh, the crankcase. Uh, so I thought, right, the, oil, the only way oil can get in there really is if the seal on the crankshaft has gone, which involves taking everything off. So I have had this off, uh, the rotor. Uh, that's got the uh, starter motor clutch in it. Uh, and that chain and sprocket, I pulled that off, then this plate comes off um, and you can get at the uh, main uh, seal for the crankshaft, sorry I'm thinking as I'm going along, and there it is, that's what I've removed, I think this was just slightly weeping, I think it was contaminating the points with oil enough to stop it sparking properly, so all you do is remove all this, get in there and then you hook it out, you, you can you can get in there and hook that out. So I just pulled it out this one. They can be a bit stubborn, uh, but this came out really easily. So I just pushed the new one in with my hand, tapped it uh, with a small hide mallet, make sure it was all seated level, uh, and then put this back on. So that's where I'm up to with it. Now all I've got to really do is, and I say all, uh, is put the cover on, uh, put the points on and the advanced mechanism, check the timing, uh, and then see if it will run. Uh, so that's what I'm going to get up to now. This is cover goes on first, then you fit all this lot, the timing gubbins, put the cover on, put that cover on, and away we go. Now look, 
you may notice uh, that, I mean, look at the state of this cover. Uh, that's just an old one I had on the shelf. I've only put it here to show you. This and this weren't quite as bad as this, but they were very scabby. And all I've done is rub them down with a bit of wet and dry to take all the, you know, where the paint's missing and you get an edge for a pothole in the paint. Uh, all I did was flat it off with two grades of wet and dry, a slightly coarse one and then a really fine one. And then I puffed it over with a bit of hammerite smooth silver. Now I think this is a really good match for Honda engines. It's not perfect, but look, I had this on the shelf. So this has had three coats. I put it in front of the space heater. Uh, did it late last night and it's dry this morning. Really, I'd like to leave it another day, but I, I need it back on the road. Uh, and I think they look lovely. I mean, check them out. That, that it's not perfect, but it hasn't cost me anything. Um, uh, and there we go. So I'm very, very happy with that. And the other thing you may notice, uh, this had crosshead screws. Um, for some reason, the clutch cover, which I've also got to do, we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, uh, have the cross heads the other side has got allen bolts and i thought you know what i'll upgrade it so i've just been down the fastening place in bedford and i've bought some stainless allen bolts to fix them on with just because it'll all be matching on both sides then so uh right i think it's time to get stuck in uh, the first thing when you're going to put this cover back on uh, as i said i've got new fixings nice stainless allen bolts now because these are stainless and they're going in mostly into aluminium, you must copper slip these bolts or they will seize. Uh, and in years to come, when you go to get it out, it'll be a nightmare. So just get a dab on your fingers, spin it, get it on the threads and on the shaft as well, because they can seize in the actual casing because this goes all furry. Um, so there we go. So copper slip all the bolts before you put the cover on. Right, I'm about to put the cover on. Uh, one word of caution, there are two dowels uh, which locate in this outer case that hold it on. They're guides, in effect, that hold it on in exactly the right place. There's one at the back here and one down here. Make sure that those are in the crankcase or they're in this cover. It doesn't matter which one they're in, uh, but you do need those because, obviously, this has to be located exactly uh, because the points are held on this plate and if this is on slightly wonky you'll have all sorts of timing issues so make sure you haven't lost the dowels when you've taken the case off uh, I've already put a new gasket on I had to do that before I put this on um, so the first thing to do is just make sure it locates nicely on, on the dowels the magnet pulls it out your hand uh, you just jiggle it and there you go uh, that's gone on beautifully uh, sorry about the phone uh, because the magnets kind of grabbed that out my hand and it clonked in, it's, got, it's located beautifully. However, so it shows you you've got to be careful. Uh, this big cable for the starter motor should be in this slot and it isn't. So I've got to pull it off and go again, which isn't a problem. I haven't fixed it. This cable should be in here. Right now, get the bolts in the case. And if you push them all in and don't do them up or at least only half a turn, uh, you should have roughly the same amount of bolts sticking out on each hole so you know you've got the right length bolt and this one also has a wire clip so there's the clip that's part of the casting and there's this little one here and that one goes in this hole so I'll put that in first hook, hook the cable into it and just seat that a tiny bit oh, and then just put them in there and just turn them literally a turn or so so they don't fall out, just to locate them, check they're locating nicely. There's no gasket in the way. That one goes in there. Another medium one. It's important just to get them all in. Uh, you know, don't do one up tight now. Just, <clears throat> just get them all in loosely uh, and, that, and then you can pull the cover down flush. There we go. And then don't put it on the ratchet yet. You can, you'll sink them all down uh, just with your fingers so you can't over tighten it. And this also means you can't cross thread it and strip a thread in the aluminium engine. If you've cross-threaded this, it, it won't turn if you're doing it this way. If you've got it on a ratchet and wind it in, uh, you can get it wrong. That one's a little bit tighter, but 
uh, it's quite corroded, the actual nut, the captive nut. Start in the middle and work your way out as well, generally, as a rule of thumb. Right, I've snugged those Allen bolts down. Uh, the next thing now is to reconnect your electrics. So obviously that one goes in there. That goes in there. That goes down there. And then that little rubber grommet goes in there. Now obviously that has to be flush with the case and it's flat side out. So there's the flat side out. That goes in there nicely. That's the voltage. That goes to the voltage regulator. And that one is nothing. Uh, that. Uh, I think that should be up in there, actually. Hang on. Let's put that up in there. I think it was up in there before. Yeah. Snug that in. There we go, that's all neat and tidy. Right, you've got to get the gear change in on this one. There we go, that's easy. Doing with your fingers, snug them down. I didn't put that little wire in there, that's got to go in there, that's all right, that's a, just a tab on the frame. <coughs> I'm very happy with the finish on these covers. This looked really scabby, this cover. use my little ratchet on this these don't need to be particularly tight let's do the middle one first I'll do that then, then the gear change now normally you should mark this where the where the split in it is on there. I tend to know vaguely where it goes. What you want to make sure is that on the up change, this doesn't hit your case. I have it just a fraction below. It's a very tight line on a on a Bentley where where it goes. And I'll I'll just check it in a minute. Right, so that's gone on easy. So when you go up gears, oh, hang on. why is that not going in? There we go. Look, it'll just miss the case, and it'll just miss the case. And it'll also put a bit on it because it will flex and bend when you do it. That's just missing. That's perfect. So put it back down into neutral. Put the bolt in. You don't want it any higher than that. And the next notch down, I find it too low to get my foot under it when I'm wearing clompy boots in the middle of winter. In summer, I might lower that. Just one little serration on there. Just snug that down, recheck it's not going to hit the case, but that's fine, it's, it's about a quarter of an inch away. Right, there we go, uh, that's that one. I love the look of that case, I'm so happy with it because it's been scabby for years. So the next job is to put all the timing stuff back on and check the timing. Right, the next thing to go on, uh, is the advanced mechanism, uh, which we took apart in a video very early on when I first got it and I couldn't get it to run right. Um, so uh, I know this is okay. Now look, it has a locating peg that has to go in that slot uh, on there on the crankshaft. Uh, this can be a little bit fiddly now. Uh, so what you've got to do is locate that in the right place and make sure it seats snugly. Hang on. Uh, 
So you just got to rotate this until you get it in correctly. It'll just slot in flat and it's not flat. There we go. So that's located that peg in the ring it's meant to go in. Uh, then um, get that wire out of the way. Uh, now is the contact breaker plate. Now obviously you rotate this to adjust the timing. Uh, and I put two marks on it that you see at top and just below three o'clock, which line up with the ones on the case. So you just got to get that on there, ho hold that so it doesn't move. Uh, you don't have to get that plate dead accurate at the moment. Um, and then I should have the nut, uh, which is in my hand. Uh, then next goes this, and that's got a slot in it. Obviously that locates on there. And that, oh, I think that's come out. Oh no, there we go. Um, and uh, that's how you turn the crankshaft over on this model. Um, you shouldn't turn it over uh, with this little bolt. Uh, it's not man enough for the job. Now, hopefully, this will slot in. Hang on. Um, where's my little ratchet got? Here. And just snug that down lightly to begin with. Ooh. And there we go, that, that's all in. Uh, next, just put the contact breaker connector on. Uh, obviously, I haven't put the bolts in to hold this plate on yet, um, which I'll do in a minute. There we go. So, and then there's my marks. Uh, I could, should be able to rotate this slightly. Hang on, why is that being stubborn? Here we go. Uh, that, see that mark there and this mark here? Uh, that was there. So now I'll just put the screws there, there and there that hold that plate in. And I know the timing should be roughly right, but I'll show you how to check it in a minute. And uh, I put the screws in uh, and now finally tighten this one uh, and you hold the big nut still with a spanner and just snug that down. You don't have to go mega on that. Uh, uh, and there we go. That's the timing on. Now to check it. Right, the first thing you're going to do to check the timing is take the spark plugs out because otherwise you're turning the engine over on compression and you won't be able to hold it uh, where you need to inspect it through the window. So remove the spark plugs. Uh, now obviously when you're doing the timing it's all about getting the spark plug to spark at the right time. The spark plug sparks via the contact breakers. So uh, what you've got to do is make sure they're opening at the right time. Uh, and to facilitate that, Honda put marks uh, on the engine. Uh, so if you look in here, Harry, uh, you can see through that hole, there's a little timing line on the crankcase. Uh, and on that advanced retard mechanism, you can just see there, there's two little lines. Uh, that's top dead. Uh, now, obviously, uh, the next mark is the firing mark. Um, so if I go slowly, it will fly over top dead. Oh, did that go too far? That F mark, you can see the line there, is now perfectly in line uh, with the one on the crankcase. Uh, and that's when you want your spark to happen. So to get everything to do, happen at the right time, you can rotate this backing plate. Um, but obviously, you've got to put voltage through a multimeter to know when these are opening. So there we go again. There's the top dead mark. This does fly around a bit when, you, when you're doing it. So I'll try and stop it. Now I want that F mark, the line by the F, I want 6 volts when that just gets to the line. And there. So that is absolutely spot on. So I don't need to adjust anything. If you did need to adjust it, all you do is loosen these screws and turn the plate until that line is in line. So that's how you adjust your timing. Uh, the final thing to do is put the points cover back on. Look, I gave this a quick lick over on the mop so it's nice and shiny because I've painted the cases. Uh, and then put the spark plugs back in and fire it up and see if it'll run. Right, that's it back together. New crank seal, uh, timing checked, uh, covers painted, new ignition coil. So hopefully now I won't get oil all over the points. Uh, let's see 
if it starts, it's a bit awkward kicking it up here. Right, first time. Uh, so that's good. Now look, I won't know if I've actually cured that oil leak till I actually ride it, but that's this stage done. So uh, I'm very happy with that and fingers crossed we won't have an oil leak and we won't have oil on the points.